Now, once you understand how you can display all your data using React Query, let's take a look at how you can consume your API using helper functions. So inside this helper.js file, let me create a few more functions here so we can consume the API. Let me change this function name to users because using this function, we are returning all the users. Save this file, copy this get user. Don't forget to change that right here as well inside this table. It's users. Save this file back to the helper.js and right down here, I'm going to say export constant get user. And this time I'm only going to return a single user from this function. So I'm going to say here a sync and pass here a function like this. And then I'm going to pass here a parameter called user ID. And right down here, I'm going to say constant response is equal to await and then call the fetch JavaScript function. And inside this, we pass the backtick operator pass the dollar sign in the curly braces, we first pass the base URL and then pass the API and the user's endpoint. Just after this user endpoint, we need to pass the user ID. So here I'm going to say forward slash and then specify dollar curly braces and then I'm going to specify this user ID here. So this statement is going to return the single object as a response. Just after that, once we have that data, we can just say here constant json is equal to await response dot json and right inside it here i'm going to say if we have json so if you have data inside this json then i'm going to return that json otherwise i'm going to return nothing so i'm just going to return an empty object as a response from this get user this function is going to return the single user and this function is going to return all users just out of that, let me just scroll down and create a function for posting a new user. So I'm going to say here, posting a new user. And then I'm going to say here, export a sync function, add user. And using this function, we are going to add a new user. So to this add user, we need to pass the form data. We pass here form data. So when we get the form data from the user, we pass that to this form data. And inside this, I'm going to say try and cache like this and from this catch i'm going to return the error if anything went wrong i'm going to return the error and inside this try here i'm going to create a variable called constant options is equal to and then pass an object here now because when we're posting a data we need to pass some values to this fetch function we create here a variable called options and right down here i'm going to say constant response is equal to await fetch and inside this page, we need to first specify the base URI. So using template string, we pass in the curly braces base URL. Then I'm going to specify the API and the users. Then you need to convert this data into JSON format. So I'm going to copy the statement and paste that right down here. We need to make a post request using this fetch function. So every time when you execute the fetch function with the URL, it will going to make a get request. So get is the default method of fetch. If you want to make a post request, you need to inform the fetch function to make a post request. So here we need to say method. We need to pass here property called method. And in the single code, I'm going to pass the type of method, which is post. Then we need to pass headers as well. Headers. And inside an object, we need to specify first the content type. So I'm going to say here content type. And this is going to be the application JSON type. And then I'm going to pass my data. So I'm going to say here body JSON and using this JSON object, I'm going to first stringify the data using stringify function. And then I'm going to pass here form data. So I'm going to convert this form data into stringify format and then return that to the body. And just out of that, you need to pass these options as a second argument to this page function, something like this. And just out of that, you need to return this statement. So return JSON. Now let's consume the update API. So let me copy this command, paste it right down here and say here, update a new user. So let me first say here, export a sync function, update user. And here you need to pass two parameters. First is user ID, because when you update your data, you need user ID and the updated data. So we need to pass here form data as a second parameter. Just out of that, I'm going to copy all this option parameter right from here and then specify that inside this function. Or you can just call here try and catch block. 
that's up on you. If you want to write a safer code, you can add here try and catch block. Just for now, I'm going to print this option. And instead of post, right now we are making the put request. So we pass here put. Everything goes the same. I'm not going to do anything here. Instead, when I make a request, so let me copy both the statement. Specify that here. When I call this fetch function, I'm going to make a request to this user endpoint. But this time, I'm going to pass the user ID. So just out of these users, I'm going to pass forward slash and then pass here dollar. In the curly braces, I'm going to specify my user ID here. So we are going to make the dynamic API call using this function. Just start that, you need to return this JSON. So just say here return JSON. And now we can do the same thing for deleting the user. So right down here, I'm going to specify delete a user. So we need to first say here export a sync function, which is delete user. And we only need one parameter here, which is user. Because when deleting the user, you only need user ID. So I pass here a parameter called user ID. And inside this, I'm going to first copy this option, specify that here, copy all this statement, specify that right down here. And we need to make some changes here. This is a type of delete request. So we pass here delete. We are not posting any data. So let me get it of this body right from here. You can get it of this header as well, but I'm going to leave this as it is. And just out of that inside this page function, you have to pass the user ID which you want to delete and then pass your options, get the JSON response and return that. That's it. Now you can see using all these helper functions, you can access your API very easily.